Good morning. It's September 19th, and welcome to Doing Life, daily devotions for finding peace in stressful times. This is the audible companion of the book by the same name. And today's title is, It's Evitable. The music you're listening to is The Adventure of Life by Maurizio Malagnini. It's evitable. Our new constitution is now established and has an appearance that promises permanency. But in this world, nothing can be said to be certain except death and taxes. Benjamin Franklin. I participate in a fair amount of WWF, not World Wrestling Federation, but Words with Friends. One of the things I and my most frequent opponents have learned is that occasionally you find yourself so hopelessly behind, even with many letters left, that your demise is unavoidable. In short, you resign because the outcome is inevitable. Many games have this aspect as a common accompaniment of the competition, whether chess, poker, or boxing. Deadly competitions, also known as wars, have this as a feature as well, demonstrated by millennia of surrenders from General Cornwallis in the American Revolution, General Lee in our own Civil War, to the Japanese and the Nazis in World War II. Surrender comes when the realization of the inevitable makes the further loss of life even more absurd than the rationale for the original combat. In modern language, however, we almost always hear the negative form of the adjective, evitable, is just as much of a word and means exactly the opposite of inevitable. Evitable means avoidable. Benjamin Franklin might indeed be correct about taxes. Avoiding them can lead to one enjoying years of solitude at the government's expense in which to contemplate the folly of tax fraud. No, it's the other half of the assumption that is in fact correct. Death is totally evitable. This is the basis of the hope to which Christians hold. That is, the promise of eternal life, John 3.16. For the believer, this is not merely a fairy tale, but a reality founded upon historical observation of the risen Christ, 1 Corinthians 15.6, and upon the word left for us that records God's promise of salvation as a free gift for those who turn to him in faith, Ephesians 2.8-9, Acts 16.30-31, Acts 4.12, and John 5.24. When absolutely everything seems to be going wrong, when you feel like if it weren't for bad luck, you'd have no luck at all, when you've just lost a loved one, a friend, a job, a relationship, this is when the followers of Christ put their faith on display. This is when those who know Jesus as Savior are buoyed up by his unfailing love, his permanence, his strength, his compassion, his righteousness, and his promise of bringing us home to the place where there are no tears and no sorrow. So, sorry, Benjamin, I love your sayings almost as much as those of G.K. Chesterton and Winston Churchill, but you only get partial credit on this one, dude. Dear Heavenly Father, we love you because you first loved us. Thank you that you demonstrated this love for us through your Son, Jesus Christ, and in so doing, removed the curse of death from those of us who have faith. Thank you that you have made that end that many men fear completely evitable. Amen. We'll see you tomorrow.